So one of the big questions on people's lips is what happened to Barcelona's defense. So one of the big questions on people's lips is can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time? You'll see this topic discussed all over YouTube and within the fitness community. Welcome to the exercise science playlist to communicate evidence for you to critically think about which you may apply or not depending on your needs. And the purpose of my video to be clear is to present a piece of research to you from 2020, which was a research review which examines the literature, the body of evidence into this topic and therefore I think it's a useful communication to you. I am not telling you what to do. I am not telling you how to specifically program. I'm not telling you you have to agree with everything that this research paper says, that it's set in stone, the gold standard, that there's no room for critical thinking. These are the hardest videos to make. This will take me about 15 to 20 hours in terms of planning, filming, editing, presenting, etc. And so some of the information from this research paper will be helpful to you. Other pieces of information will not be satisfying due to the conflicting nature of the data. And that's just really how research is. And I understand that it can be frustrating. But as always, do not suffer from paralysis by analysis. Don't overthink things. The most important thing, of course, is doing the work consistently. Essentially, the answer to the title of my video is yes, you can, but with a sh ton of caveats and there are many variables attached. Let's start with the conclusion of the study and the main point so you can turn off this video quickly. Despite the common belief that building muscle and losing fat at the same time is only plausible in novice obese individuals, the literature provided supports that trained individuals can also experience body recomposition. The nuance is absolutely vital here. Individuals training status, the exercise interventions and their baseline body composition can influence the magnitude of muscle gained and fat loss. And so this paper is stating that trained individuals can also build muscle and lose fat at the same time. However, importantly, the amount of change for trained individuals may be less than novice or obese people, for example. And also the amount of change within that trained population can differ from person to person depending on many, many variables. Resistance training coupled with dietary strategies has been shown to augment this phenomenon. There seems to be confounding non-training nutrition variables such as sleep, hormones and metabolism that can significantly influence these adaptations. And also very importantly, and please don't forget this, the paper states that more research is needed in many areas. This is not absolutely definitive and set in stone at this point. So let's start with the premise of this research review. And by the way, in case you haven't noticed, this video is very quote heavy. I apologize. There's no other way to do this and give you the quality information. Bear with me. It is generally thought that body recomposition occurs mainly in both the untrained novice and over overweight obese populations. When examining the literature, this dogma seems logical because training age and also the novelty of initiating a resistance training program have been shown to directly impact the rate of muscle mass accrual. You will be familiar with the idea that a novice lifter, a beginner lifter, can gain muscle quickly as the training, the stimulus is new to their nervous system, their muscular system, for example. That's something you, of course, know. And as you become more experienced, a more trained individual, it can be harder to eke out those further gains. Most importantly, despite the zeitgeist that well-trained individuals cannot gain muscle mass and lose fat simultaneously, there have been many chronic randomized controlled trials conducted in resistance trained individuals that have demonstrated body recomposition and they put eight references in there which is significant and indeed table three in the paper breaks down some of this research which showed muscle gain and fat loss simultaneously in trained individuals and the table goes on and on and on so just be very clear there is quality research which does suggest that trained individuals can achieve this body recomposition and by the way there are 76 references as part of this paper. And so to assess the body of evidence into this topic, the researchers first had to think about issues such as body composition measurements. We have many ways that you can measure body fat, for example, and they have differing levels of accuracy. They have advantages and disadvantages. And so the researchers in this review took that into account, which is excellent. And this table in their paper shows the advantages and disadvantages to many ways of measuring body composition. And so what you can do is screenshot that and save it. Or if you want, you can print it out, put it on your wall, whatever floats your boat. And importantly, these are what's called variables that we need to consider when we look at research and we try to determine certain outcomes. This does not mean that a weaker measurement tool is completely invalid. It just means when you're reviewing the research, you 
need to take this into account as a liability. And so importantly, this paper discusses many populations such as athletes and also physique competitors. Now, I don't want to get into the physique competitor aspect of the paper because that just ate my field. So I feel uncomfortable even just projecting research to you from that field. And in relation to athletes, the paper essentially says that athletes have periods of lower intensity training, for example, in their off season. And when they come back to training, they can very efficiently regain their gains if you like. And table four in the paper does show research in relation to physique competitors. So if you are interested in that, of course, I've referenced the paper down below. You can go and read these sections for yourself. It is well accepted that training status significantly impacts the rate of progress in body composition. Novice trainees tend to experience greater muscular adaptations compared to advanced lifters. Experienced lifter, of course, it can be harder to eke out extra muscle growth or extra fat loss. For example, this is when being smarter in your training, using different methods of progressive overload, for example, trying to find new ways of challenging yourself or maybe manipulating nutrition. That's where all these factors come into play. Collectively, these studies indicate that body recomposition can occur in trained individuals using a variety of resistance training programs that are geared to develop muscular strength and hypertrophy. That's something I always express on this channel, how there are many ways that you can train. As long as you have those base layer principles of muscle growth, for example, progressive overload, protein intake, the consistency, dynamic contractions. There are many, many different ways that you can train to build muscle. In addition, adjusting nutritional intake is common in individuals attempting to maximize resistance training gains in strength and hypertrophy. So what do you do for nutrition? Because a calorie surplus, of course, relates to muscle growth, a calorie deficit to fat loss. What do you do? Do you mix and match? This is going to be the most unsatisfying part of this video because this is what this piece of research is communicating. Generally, caloric deficits are prescribed for individuals seeking to lose fat mass and caloric surpluses are recommended for those seeking to maximize muscle mass accrual. Although this is common practice, there is evidence that challenges this approach and suggests there may be alternative strategies to improve body composition. And essentially they're saying it's unclear at this point. They cannot give you a set in stone protocol for building muscle and losing fat at the same time. There are so many issues to consider. Variability between studies makes it difficult for researchers, coaches, and practitioners to make evidence-based suggestions as we continue to investigate which approach is the most advantageous for trained individuals. Individuals. So in terms of the evidence base, they cannot give you a set in stone protocol. However, there are many coaches who do have methods for this. For example, Dr. Brett Contreras talks about how he achieves this. If you go to his media, you'll find that. And so if you want specific programming, please go to these different coaches where you can find this information. However, they do give a useful analysis of the data, which you can think about. Taken together, these reports document the process of body recomposition with moderate to high dietary protein intakes, coupled with progressive resistance training across a wide spectrum of trained populations. Moreover, having higher levels of body fat may affect the magnitude of body recomposition because these fat stores may provide endogenous energy to support muscle mass accrual. However, the impact of initial body fat levels, training status, resistance training programs, and nutritional intake on body recomposition are not yet fully elucidated and warrants further investigation. And so to the last part of the video, we made it. Here are the practical applications for you to consider applying to your training if you want to build muscle and lose fat at the same time. However, to be very clear, I am not telling you what to do. I'm simply communicating research to you as always, think critically and you may apply this or you may not apply this. You may apply certain parts and not others. That is the point of my videos like this. Implementing a progressive resistance training regimen with a minimum of three sessions per week, tracking rate of progress and paying attention to performance and recovery can be important tools to appropriately adjust training over time. Consuming 2.6 to 3.5 grams per kilogram of fat-free mass may increase the likelihood or magnitude of recomposition. Protein supplements may be used as mean to increase daily dietary protein intake as well as a tool to maximize muscle protein synthesis that is a fair evaluation of protein supplements they may help you to get extra protein into your diet they are not absolutely mandatory or compulsory they can be very much for convenience needs such as explained there prioritizing sleep quality and quantity may be an additional variable that can significantly impact changes in performance recovery and body composition. That was intense, next video will be a bit lighter. I hope this video was helpful to you and that it may have some information that may help you in your health and fitness journey. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science, see you soon.